Hello, with this video I would like to show you how we can create an event. Now we are in the eTwinning live page and we go to the events at the top bar and then you see that on the left uh, we can see the page of the events where we can see all the events that uh, have been planned uh, for today and for the other weeks, the following weeks. And we go here where it says create an event. We click on that. And now we need to describe our event. The first thing that we need to do is create a, write the title. Now the title should actually show the people what the, the event is all about. That means that if we want to attract the participants, we have to, uh, to make it uh, specific and uh, informative, uh, but at the same time it has to be a short one. Or if it is for a project, uh, a specific project, then it should also mention that so that the other participants are not interested. So here for this event, uh, I am going to uh, create an event for this uh, video, an event for a planned uh, project. I want to start a new project, so I'm starting this one. Um, event for the project, um, let's say FC, okay. LA um, FC. This is the name of a new project I'm planning with a, a partner. So I need to write an event, a description here uh, is for the purposes of the project. Okay, um, right. Okay, so that um, um, everybody knows what it is about. Now, the next thing that we need to do is uh, we write uh, whether it is an on-site event or if it is an online event, as the case is here. And I move on to the next step. Now, I need or I may want to upload an image uh, which is uh, related to this event. But for my case, we haven't got a logo yet. If I, if I had started the project and if I already had a logo for my project, a logo image, then I would upload it here. I would browse my computer and I would upload it here. But here now there is no uh, logo, it's just a plan. So I just leave it there. The language is English. Okay, how many people can attend? Now it's only me and my partner, so I'm going to choose 2 to 10. Okay, and what kind of event are you planning? Here we need to choose uh, what kind of um, uh, event uh, we have. And um, I'm partner finding, presenting, my, I just choose. Um, I just need to, to talk to my partner about it. So sharing practice is what I'm going to say because we're going to talk to each other about what we've done, what we're planning, maybe what we have already uh, shared uh, in other projects. Now, who is going to be, uh, who is going to attend uh, the project is the next question. Is it going to be anyone in the training? Do you want anybody to be there? Do you want only uh, your contacts or some of your contacts? Or do you restrict the event to e-tweeners from specific countries and or languages? If I choose the third one, then I'm going to be given the option to choose which countries and to choose the language of this event. But in my case, I'm going to choose only my contacts because my partner is one of my contacts. I don't want anybody to be able to attend this meeting. And then the next thing I did, I do is to select an available slot. How many, how much time is this going to last? I just choose one hour. It could be half an hour or it can be uh, 90 minutes, an hour and a half. Now I'm going to choose one hour. And then the next thing is choose the date. So now it is uh, uh, August, all right. It's the 23rd, I want it to be on the 23rd of August. And now I need to search uh, the time slots available for that day and uh, uh, lasting one uh, uh, hour. So we are here. Remember here that it is uh, Central European time. All the events, no matter where you are or which language you have your e-tweening live, uh, you are going to be given the Central European time uh, time slots here. And the time mentioned in the events page is always a Central European time. So each partner needs to adjust the time to his or her own country. 
so if we have partners from many countries, it's quite easy to to see what time it is really uh, on uh, in their own country. So I just uh, let's say that I want it um, now here in Greece. It's one hour later, so I'm going to say uh, this time this time here so it's going to be 7 to 8 central european time or it's going to be 8 to 9 in greece so i have that uh, and i move on to the next step now earlier uh, i said that i want my contacts only so now i am given the list of my contacts all here so that i can choose among them but because i have quite a few i can either try to find my uh, my contact or the person i want to here she is there she is so this is my my partner uh, for my new project or I could actually uh, click here and search and just write the first the second letter and so that I could spot my contact uh, faster so I only want to invite one person now the next thing that we are asked to do is select the tools when we have when we create an event uh, we can also have a forum and a file archive that means that if I want to speak to the participants of the event and uh, talk to them about uh, perhaps preparations or perhaps some things they need to do before the event or some instructions that I want to give them for instance if they are uh, new in uh, eTweening maybe I could give them some instructions on how to log in how to arrange their sound and all this so I can give them a forum or if I want to have some conversation before or afterwards I create a forum and it's there for everybody to see everybody to consult everybody to participate and the file archive is uh, where I upload some files before the event or even after the event. So for the participants, if they ask me uh, for a file uh, during an event, I can tell them you are going to go to the file archive of the event and you can find it there. Or maybe I can add there the decisions that were made during an event. Uh, if we have too many participants and I can't send them all, everybody uh, this is the specific file. So whether we have planned something or not, it's always nice to include the form in the file archive just in case. It, they're very helpful. And then I just click on preview and I see all the, uh, the information that I have uh, uh, added so far. And I just want to make sure that everything is all right and that uh, everything is to my satisfaction. So I submit. Now my event has been added to my events here okay so you see uh, if I go to uh, my events your events it says here your events is going to go to uh, there it is so on my page you can see the upcoming events event for this project this events for the purposes of the project now if something happens and I don't want to uh, to do the event go ahead with the event all I do is just click on here on this arrow and you see that I can delete it because I can't edit it I can't change it I can't change the time or I can't change the date uh, therefore the only thing to do would be to delete the whole event and then create another one from the beginning uh, however I can invite more contacts if I want more contacts to participate even though I have already planned the event, I can invite them even a little before the event takes place. So it's uh, the only the only different thing that we can actually do. Um, everything is ready then. So if we just uh, go to the events page, uh, we are going to see here it is that uh, on that date. Um, so it's the 23rd of August on that date today. Uh, there is a live event at the moment and there are two more events planned you see here is our event when you click on this event you can see the information that i added earlier uh, which say here it is uh, the forum the files and uh, because it is less than 24 hours from uh, the time of the date i i just planned it for a couple of hours later I can always enter the meeting room now because it's 24 hours earlier and I can make all the plans, all the preparations that I need for my event before the participants start coming in the event. So here we have uh, all the information that I added a bit earlier. 
Okay, and my event is ready. So good luck with your own events.